Welcome back to Rad JBI. I'm JB. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the JBI Spec WP Explorer Pro 6500 Pro Fork DIY Kit. Awesome. So, with that in mind, we're not going to do it step by step. Instead, I'm going to show you just the finer details of how to install the exact pieces of our kit. This video assumes you already know how to work on the WP Exact Pro Fork or exact pro damping cartridge system. It requires special tooling. A lot of the walls and thicknesses of the tubing is rather thin. So you need to be very precise about what you're doing or you can easily damage and mess up the components you're working with. So first item you're gonna get from us is a complete JBI titanium sub valve that is complete with all the shims already on it. The shims that we provide here are gonna be custom selected and built based on the information that you give us. It will have a O-ring right on top. This O-ring is not going to be moved or used. It's here to keep the shims in place during shipping. The O-ring on the back side, just above the threads, that does stay in place. Now, I have a small Allen key right here. And when I go to install our titanium sub valve, we're gonna take off the shims just so that way we can easily get to our flat spots for installing this with a socket. I think this is a number four Allen key, maybe even a number three, but something pretty small. You can see what I'm doing. Now I'm gonna do this over this tablecloth here. Please take your time at home so that way you can maintain order of all of these. Excellent. So now that we have this stand alone, it's time to get this installed into here. I now have the compression assembly fixtured in the vise here. First thing I'm going to do is remove the 17 millimeter nut that fixtures our compression valving to the compression piston post. A lot of these pieces we're going to reuse. Be careful. We got the nut. We got the check spring underneath it and then the check plate as well. Let's keep that assembly all together. Next, the come off is going to be our compression piston. This we're going to reuse as well. And then next we have all the shims, which we're not going to reuse any of those. So you can just grab them. And however they're sorted, doesn't really matter and just set those aside. And then next we need to remove our compression piston post but we're going to want to apply some heat to it first to ensure that this post unthreads. If you don't do that, this black post is instead going to unthread from the cap and you will have created a lot more additional work for yourself. So in order to remove these, we got two methods. <clears throat> first method is the flame. And we heat up just the tip, but you want to be very care careful not to melt or burn the Teflon bands or rubber O-rings here. That's why you just wanna do the tip. But a much safer method, and what I prefer, is a heat plate. I believe this is from Amazon. Got it for like $19. It's been feeding my family for the past 10 years. They work excellent. But what you can do is we take a socket, we can put it upside down, turn the heat plate on, and we're gonna put the flat part of our compression post right against this socket. This isn't plugged in, but I'll turn it all the way up to five and just let it get hot and I'll walk away. All right, now that time has passed. This will definitely be hot to touch. So just keep in mind, I am guilty of sometimes heating things up and then immediately grabbing them afterwards as if I did not realize I just heated up something. Um, this isn't hot, I already cracked this loose. So for demonstration purposes, this is easier to show you guys, but this will be hot. So we'll grab that off. We're gonna refix it up in our vise. And now we want a 15 millimeter socket or a wrench, whatever you want to do. The key is you don't want to damage our free piston at all while we're removing this. I like to utilize the 15 millimeter deep sockets in order to remove these. So I'm going to grab this one right here. When I pull down on the free piston with my hand, you can see that I expose the hex shape of the compression piston post. Cool. So we got that cracked loose. Now we can unthread this by hand. And this is our compression piston post that we're gonna change out. It looks like our needle stayed inside there. Sometimes the needle will come out inside of this with it. <clears throat> That's okay, just make sure to put it back in. 
Now on this setup, I'm gonna be changing out the fork pressure spring rate as well. Right now it's an 18. We commonly like to use the uh, 16s. Um, when I give you your DIY kit, I'm gonna give you a technical or a JBI suspension settings guide. And it'll be really comprehensive with technical data. On that guide, it'll tell you the recommended pressure spring that we recommend for you. Um, they don't come in the DIY kit, but we can sell them um, additionally with a DIY kit if you need one. So this would be the time that you would wanna change out that pressure spring. You can do that by just sliding off the free piston. We're gonna have a plastic spacer and then our pressure spring comes off. We'll set that aside. We're gonna grab our new 16. These aren't directional, so you can put it on either way. I like to put the numbers going up where it says 16. Granted, you can't see it while they're assembled. Our plastic spacer is gonna fit back in place and back with our free piston. Now there's an O-ring on the inside of here that seals against our free piston shaft. So take your time reassembling this and don't catch that O-ring in a way that you're going to damage it. As you can see, I'm kind of walking it on to the shaft. So now that we have that part exposed, we are ready to install our JBI titanium subvalve. We're gonna put a little bit of Loctite on the threads right here. And then also afterwards, we're gonna to torque it down to nine foot pounds. That is 108 inch pounds, or for your metric guys, 12.2 Newtons. I repeat, nine foot pounds or 12.2 Newton meters. Not a ton, because this is an M8 thread. This is titanium, but it's also hollow, and it's being mated to a hollow aluminum threaded shaft. So we don't gotta go crazy. That's also why we're using Loctite to ensure that this stays in place. At Ride JBI, we love the orange Loctite by uh, Permatex. They advertise it as the strength of red, but the removability of blue, meaning you don't have to utilize heat in order to remove it. I got some Loctite on our threads right there, and I'm going to begin threading this by hand. Ooh, beautiful. You can tell the quality of thread that we have cut with how nice it threads into there. We'll get that in most of the way, and then we'll go back over to our fixture so we can torque this up. Again, units are important. We're gonna do nine foot-pounds. Another tip is this is an 18 millimeter, so you're gonna need an 18 millimeter socket. Please use a six-point socket and not the starred sockets. That's important because the surface of our free piston here needs to be perfectly flat. If you damage this surface at all during the install, then the shim's not gonna sit flat and it's really going to reduce the effectiveness of this valve. So that's really important. Um, while we're doing this, grab onto the free piston, pull it down so you can expose that. And one more time for good measure. Awesome, so do it one more time. Perfect, so that tells us this is fully torqued. I'm feeling fully, fully torqued. So good so far. Next, we can jump back over to our shim stack that we have provided. We're going to slide this right back on. Now, there's no special orientation that the shims have to be in meaning spinning them any which way, just slide them down, and they're all going to be centered on this post. The O-ring has come off because we're not reusing it. So now we're ready to reinstall our compression piston again. It looks very similar, but I do have two different sides. The side with the recess, recess in the center is going to be facing up. The side with no recess is going to be the one that goes directly against our shims. Before I do that, I'm gonna blast off with a little bit of compressed air to clean it. And I'm actually gonna do this on our shims. Now, when we send you these shims, they will be pretty clean, or they will be very clean as well, but it's always good to take extra steps of preventative measure. So, we got that installed. Please look at your O-ring around here. These O-rings don't normally get damaged at all because this piston's fixed, meaning it doesn't move at all, but sometimes you will see them torn. So if that's the case, seek out a replacement one. My favorite website is theoringstore.com. You can buy every size O-ring you could possibly think of from there. So next, you're gonna get a bag. 
with two small shims inside of it as well with the sub valve. Now is the time to grab out that shim. Here's where this is going to go. Earlier, we removed a few pieces from the top. So first, our check shim is going to go back on first. I'm going to clean that and it's looking kind of yucky. And now next, the shim we gave you is going to go on first. What we're doing is we're kind of limiting the travel that this shim can lift up because it doesn't need to lift open as far as it does. Um, it lifts open really far, which means it has to travel really far to then close again. And that doesn't make this very responsive. So instead, we're going to reduce it by adding another shim. So that's what that's for here. This recess or this extended piece, extended feature is going to fit into the recess of that piston. So we need to be very careful that as we assemble this, we don't catch the edge of this shim and bend it or distort it in any way. There's a way to check it after we're done. Um, these shims should be able to spin and also lift open if we didn't catch them. Um, now's a good time to throw a little bit of Loctite onto our assembly as well. What I'm doing is I'm holding the shim with my hand against the check spring that's inside of there. So that's how I'm kind of holding this uh, assembly together. And then we're going to start threading this on. Cool. So if you want to come in and zoom in a little bit, you'll see that the top hat feature is starting to engage. And now we need to line up and center the shims with it. Cool. We just made that snug. Now we're always going to provide these kits to you to where pretty much the threads are pretty much evenly matched with the nut. They might protrude a little bit or they might be recessed a little bit depending on the shim stack that we give you. But it's pretty much going to be exactly spot on as you can see. Now the next step is we want to torque that down. And the torque rating for this, which is an M6 thread, but it is titanium, is going to be 45 inch pounds not foot pounds, inch pounds. So 45 inch pounds is just a little less than four foot pounds. We got our small quarter inch drive torque wrench ready to go. That's torqued down. We can see that the shims here can spin and also they can lift open. So what we did is we limited how far they can lift open just a little bit, not by a lot, because the amount that lifts open is when the fork backfills after a compression stroke. It didn't need to lift as far as it did. So this is in there, correct? Wipe off any Loctite you may have gotten on the inside. A nice habit we have here at Ride JBI is to take some WD-40 afterwards and we're gonna spray some just right through the center. And you'll see some of the oil come up through here. That just ensures that if you did get any Loctite in there, it's not going to uh, dry and cause your clicker assembly to be seized up. So, so far so good. You have correctly installed the JBI Titanium sub valve with our JBI spec shim stack that we custom built for you and everything is torqued down and locked tight as it should be. So now we're going to shift gears to the mid valve section of this. In this part of the video, now I'm going to show you how to install the mid valve portion of your WP Exact Pro 6500 Pro Fork DIY kit. Next to me, I already have the cartridge assembly uh, mounted and we have the rebound piston post. And as you can see, I've already removed the rebound piston and all of the valving that is there. So what is left behind is just the rebound piston post. We wanna make sure that there's no small shims or anything else on that post itself. The first part we're going to install back on is going to be our spring. This was in there in stock form and we're going to maintain use of that. Next, we're going to install the mid valve compression stack that we give you. And at close glance, you can see that one side has a smaller shim and diameter than the other side. The shims with the smaller diameter is going to go on first because this shim is roughly the same diameter as this spring and that's what pushes on it. These larger shims that are 20 mils in diameter are going to be the ones that go against the mid valve piston face. Now, these are already in the exact order that we need them to be. We custom built and assemble them that this way for you. 
So let's maintain that configuration. I'm going to slide through this number four Allen key, make sure all the shims are on it. And then I'm going to cut off our zip tie that we provided to you guys. Now in that assortment of shims is going to be a really small shim. This little guy right here. It is six millimeters on the inside diameter and eight millimeters on the outside diameter. This is a small spacing shim that we're going to put on last. So let's set that aside. We've already cleaned these, but we're going to do that just to show you guys that you should also do it as a nice additional step to verify there's no dirt, debris, or any contamination inside of these shims. That's really important because this is very sensitive to any, uh, debris or foreign matter. It will mess up what we call our mid-valve float spec. Cool. So now we're going to work on just aligning all these shims and then getting them centered over the post here at the bottom. And it is going to take a little while because we've got a bunch of shims and they all fit very precise. Cool. So we have our ledge. Now is the time we're going to grab our small shim right here. And we're going to slide that on next. This shim acts as a spacer and it is very important. As you can see, I'm still holding the shims down with my hand because we have a spring underneath here. And we want to keep all these shims centered where they are. Next is going to be our mid valve piston again. The size with the recess is going to be going down because that recess here is going to locate with that center that is extending above. Perfect. So if we did it right, what we should be able to do is one, you should be able to spin these shims if we want to. And also they will lift open a small amount as well. And that is our float amount. So these ones have been installed correctly. And now when I let go, you're going to notice this is going to lift up a little bit because of the spring here. So just be aware of that because we're going to put on the rebound shim stack next. And when you go to tighten that down, we want to make sure this still pushes down all the way and all these shims are centered and located and they haven't caught the edge in here and they're going to get pinched and damaged. This is very, very important. Uh, an easy way to know if you have it proper or not will be if you have, right now we have all threads. We don't have any smooth part of this. Now that that's down all the way, we have a smooth part of the threads and that's where our rebound shims are going to be resting against. Here's our rebound shim stack. Again, let's utilize something to just keep everything in order. It's just a uh, coat hanger from a closet that I chopped up and bent to a few different pieces. Uh, they're very good for keeping shims organized. We had a bunch of these floating around the shop. So before I install this, I'm gonna blast it off with some air. Again, just to keep everything clean. Now we're gonna start assembling this on down. Cool, so right now our delta shims aren't lined up. They're all off-centered and not aligned. So we wanna take some time to get those all lined up. That is very critical. Ooh, you can just, that just was satisfying. Awesome. So you can see our delta shims are all lined up almost perfectly. We're going to work with them a little bit more. I see they're not quite perfectly aligned. And then they are covering our rebound piston holes as well. So that's just about ready. Now it's ready to install our nut. We're going to put a little bit of orange Loctite on our nut as well. This is made by the Permatex brand. You can get it off of Amazon. You can also find it at uh, O'Reilly's as well. Uh, it's advertised as a strength of red, but the removability of blue. So that means it doesn't require heat in order to remove any lock tighted or thread locked fasteners. So let's start this by hand and get it tightened down. Cool. So that is snug by hand. Now we're going to check our shims down here and make sure, ah, see so how much they can move. That tells us they're not all aligned at the bottom yet. There we go. Mm. So another easy tell will to be, see how the nut lines up almost perfectly flat? All the kits we sell you for these WP Explore Pro or Exact Pro 6500 kits, that nut's almost gonna line up 
exactly flush. It may protrude a little bit or be recessed a little bit, depending on the exact shim stack we give you, but it's always gonna be very close and that'll be a clear indicator that you are doing things right. So now it is time for us to torque this down. This is a steel M6 post. So our torque spec for that is 45 inch pounds. Again, inch pounds, not foot pounds. Units are very important. If you want that in Newton meters, that is five Newton meters. Cool. We got our torque spec, our torque wrench spec set. I'm going to double check the alignment of our delta shims. They've kind of come out of alignment a little bit. So we're gonna have to loosen this just a little. So we can better align these. Suspension is one of those things that it's very detailed when you work on it. I tend to enjoy that part of it. And it's also very rewarding. I Meaning once you get to go ride your bike afterwards and it's feeling really good, you can really appreciate all the time and attention you took to get your bike to feel that way. So all our Delta shims are lined up. Now I'm gonna get ready to torque this nut down. As I do that, <clears throat> this mid valve piston assembly is going to want to rotate as I do it. So I'm actually going to help rotate it. So that way all the shims stay in line. Put this down. Now in the last video I just did, we did this first attempt. Will we get two in a row? I hope so. Ooh, beautiful. So all their delta shims stayed aligned. They're perfectly covering the rebound piston portholes, and this is properly torqued. One last thing we're going to do is take a little bit of WD-40. We're going to spray it through the inside. This is called the bypass hole, which is adjusted by our rebound. We put a little WD-40 in there, so that way, in case you got any bit of Loctite in there, we're going to spray it out and prevent that Loctite from curing and season up. Oh, you can see a little bit of WD-40 came out. So, great job. You have perfectly assembled your mid-valve assembly on your JBI DIY kit. You also perfectly assembled your compression assembly as well. The next step will be assembling this back to the cartridge, filling the cartridge with oil, and then getting it bled up. 